you need to learn to tolerate ambiguity. There's almost nothing that a CIO ever deals with that's in a nice neat package from start to finish and that is completed very quickly. Things tend to um, have long incubation and resolution time periods. For me, the funny thing is that when I became a CIO long, long, long ago, uh, CIO wasn't commonly used in higher ed. So I went to a meeting and I remember asking some uh, people who are my age now, um, so why do you need a CIO? <laughs> and they said because the, the, uh, the provosts and people like that don't have enough time to do this emerging technology. So that's how naive I was. <laughs> I think the most rewarding thing about being a CIO is you get to make a difference. So you can be uh, talking with the chancellor, with vice chancellors, with senior leaders across campus on the issues that are the most important. So when you're looking at what can we do to improve the quality of our student experience, what can we do to help our faculty succeed with their research, that the CIO has a voice in those discussions. I think that the, uh, the business of higher education is uh, a noble endeavor and I'm thrilled about really contributing in a way. I've chosen a life of service. Uh, my role is a service role. I embrace that role and I'm really proud to be able to serve the primary mission of the university. Aspiring CIOs need to recognize that they, they will not be ready at any particular point because they know everything that needs to be known. They have to feel confident enough about what they don't know and willing to go find it out. Uh, but there's never a point at which you have complete mastery. It's really a question of how do you understand what's important and what's not. First, I'd tell them not to be scared off by the horror stories. There are plenty of folks that want to share with you how this is a 24 by 7 by 365 job, and uh, you have to turn your whole life over to it, which, if you wanted to, it could be all-consuming. But don't let those horror stories throw you off. Helping others to achieve their potential has been something that I, I've taken an immense amount of pride in. The proudest moment probably came when our president at his State of the University address cited some organizational changes that we made as examples of how part of the university was really thinking strategically and in a transformative way. And he was citing it as showing an example of showing others how they could uh, make some difficult decisions and really come out on the other end much stronger and advancing the university. So that, that was indeed a, a good moment for all of us.